my name is Harun Kumbusian. I live um, in Zurich most of the time, but I spend a lot of time in Istanbul. Mentally, I am in New York a lot of times. Um, but yeah, I think our generation is all over the place anyway, and uh, I try just to keep up. I think the, the radical change has already happened. We have moved beyond the object. Art, for a long time, was involved or concerned with objects, either two-dimensional or three-dimensional. Now, we think about uh, moving image, we think about performance, we think about audio pieces, things that are much more ephemeral, experience-based, much more challenging to collect, maybe, but also intellectually less confined. Uh, more open-ended and I think that's a significant change. I have pieces that have a performative uh, component. It's not my focus necessarily but I think a lot of interesting artworks are being produced in that area so I always look at it. I've met collectors who have started collecting those pieces early and I, I'm jealous. I started collecting moving image and once you go down a path you try to be more or less comprehensive in your mind, even though clearly in contemporary art, being comprehensive is, is not an option, at least for a collector with you know, limited resources. But that's where I look for first. And then, you know, of course, performance art, sound pieces or uh, anything else would also interest me. As I was saying, if, if a work does not challenge me, I would not be interested. So pretty much all the works that, that I've acquired at that point, I found very challenging. Uh, I typically am not attracted to a work that appeals to me on first sight. Uh, if I can read it the moment I see it, it's probably not that interesting anyway. Something that I may find uh, strange or disturbing or I cannot explain and I have to think back is what, what interests me. And um, a lot of the works are like that uh, in the collection. Um, even though when I look at them now, they, they seem clearer in my mind. But, you know, it's, it's a process and, and that's what, what I enjoy the most. In terms of ownership, um, you know, there are works that are difficult to experience or to show. There are works that require some level of technical equipment and expertise that I have to work really hard to create. So that's a challenge on on one side. There are works that when I show to people they may not really give me the feedback that I'm looking for in, in that kind of experience. That might be a challenge as well. But in my mind, you know, once the acquisition decision has been made, they are comfortable works in that sense that they have given me something. Maybe they, the challenge is also part of the fun. I have limited resources. I could even say I have very limited resources given where the contemporary art market is. So more than budgets, I think of trade-offs. So if I acquire one work, I have to do less of something else. That could be you know, buying less of you know, other artworks or going to fewer vacations or buying uh, more expensive cars, you know, it could be anything that, uh, you know, has to basically finance the, the acquisition of, of an artwork. But if I see an artwork that, that I view as something that would have impact on the collection and on the way uh, we, we will think about new productions, then I, I would try to acquire it. And then it's basically a matter of finding the funding for it. Yeah, as I said, I mean, at the end, you know, our collection is not an institutional collection. It's, uh, it's a learning tool, in a way. I'm not trying to be comprehensive. I'm trying to look at seeing different patterns or new stories. So the collection does not have a single theme. The collection doesn't have a single purpose but there are threads in it and some of them are better developed than the others. Some of them are also uh, maybe more interesting to me than, than others, but that may also change over time. So I may decide to develop one thread that 
we might have started a, a while ago and dropped because I see a piece that all of a sudden makes that thread much more interesting. Uh, these things are not linear. They are quite intertwined and that's also the richness of this field. Yeah, that's what I enjoy. I like moving image. I think it gives the artist quite a bit of freedom. It gives the, the dim dimension of time that they can use that they don't have on two or three dimension. It gives, yeah, it gives them more freedom. So I, I'm interested in tr trying to see what they can create with that additional dimension. I also get offered more works in that medium and presumably also better quality works. The gallerists know they, that, that I'm interested in, in video, say, so they, they come with offers in, in that medium much more than you know, in, in some, some other medium. They, I don't get to see that many paintings. <laughs> So it's, it's difficult for me to, to acquire a very good painting. It's uh, relatively more accessible for me to, to get a very good piece of video. So, but clearly, I'm much more interested in, in the work than the medium. But al also, I have now the, the technical infrastructure, in a way, to show video. Even though, when I say that, you know, I should take it back. It's, uh, it's always a, a race against technology you know it always is ahead of me and i try to catch up but you know, because i have to think about it anyway given the amount of work that i have the incremental effort is not that big so in a way that reduces the price for me and basically it's not that difficult the reality is and and maybe my wife and i used you know collecting as uh, as a way of gaining that access but in a way having those relationships with people, with artists, with curators, is the primary reason why we are involved with, with the art world, because that's how we satisfy our curiosities. In New York it was very easy, you become a member of, of, a, of a museum and they have the museum groups that take you to studio visits, to gallery visits, you get to talk to the curators and that's a fantastic uh, way of gaining information. And I always try to maintain those relationships and I've gotten a lot out of those. Um, being in an acquisition committee of, a, of an institution is an incredible form of education for somebody who is interested in contemporary art, beyond just collecting even. But for, for a collector it's, you know, I cannot, it's in, invaluable pretty much because there the, the curators try to explain why they would like to acquire a certain work for a museum's collection. And then you start thinking about the different reasons why a work may fit into a collection. And also the different criteria that are, that are used. Also you see what kind of collection they are trying to build, which is typically quite different than you know, what a private individual might imagine. So th those are the, the uh, type of ways that I, you know, got information about how to go about. The other way is just reading. And I know I'm emphasizing the, the ways that are a little bit removed from the artwork. I'm, you know, it's a given that you have to do a lot of walking as well. You have to go to all museum shows and visit the galleries, uh, so on and so forth. But, um, and you know, I'll be open about my opinion on, on this issue. Just looking at art when it comes to contemporary art is not enough. You have to read about it, you have to talk about it, and more importantly, you have to listen. So people criticize uh, collectors who buy with their ears, and clearly you cannot you know, run to the gallery because you heard that artist is the next big thing. There is a huge uh, possibility for failure there, and you would miss the whole point of actually being engaged with contemporary art if you do that. But listening to the gallerists or the curators talk about the works, placing them into, the, in, into a wider context is, I think, you know, quite important to come up with your own questions about it and seeing whether it fits into what you are trying to do or how you would think about it in five years. You know, contemporary art is a it's a graduate level study, that's what I've said, and uh, collectors are typically at a disadvantage in that. Everything else that we do, do seriously, we typically have you know, graduate degrees, and 
the other participants, at least the, the, the artists and the curators, do have you know, master's degrees in, in art. When you want to engage in an area that takes that level of, of expertise, you cannot just trust your eyes. I mean, it's, there is no magic into it. You have to study. Contemporary art has its own language, like physics, like you know, economics at the graduate level. If you don't you know, learn the language, you cannot read it, you cannot understand the formulas. But it's also quite a bit wider than some of those fields. So it's not enough to memorize certain things. You always you know, need to keep looking. Thank you.